Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today we're going to be doing the White Sox breakdown and comparison to the Boston Red Sox of 2020. Because as I've said in the past, they're in the American League and we have to play them. And they may be wild card competition for us. So, in that vein, I am also going to have a guest on today's show, and that is going to be Mr. Chris Dufour of Williamstown, Massachusetts. He's been a lifelong Red Sox fan, and he will be doing the Red Sox breakdown. And between the two of us, we will give you a no-holds-barred, truthful breakdown of how the White Sox compare to the Red Sox. Can't handle the truth. All right, so. We're here with Chris Dufour on the phone, and we are getting ready to compare the 2020 White Sox to the 2020 Boston Red Sox. Yes, indeed. Yes. What, a, what an honor to be here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. And if you don't recall, or if you're new to the channel, um, I did actually have Chris on for two previous uh, videos, which you can go back and watch. Um, if you want to be more familiar with uh, with Chris Dufour, and just it, failed in our bid to get to where I was elected. Yes, and we did. That is unfortunate. Um, so that, close. He, uh, he I know. Four, 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 four he was close. So anyway, here we go. We've got the. Uh, as you can see, here's my here's my flip chart, and I'm gonna like try to zoom this out a little bit enough to see for you can see everything. Now, uh, okay, I can't see anything. Well, I know, but I sent I sent you the. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so. On my phone, by the way. Right. Which so, is not against my ear currently. Right. <laughs> so, um, first, you know, I'm just going to do a quick recap of the White Sox because I do this in every video. So, if you yeah. watch the other comparison videos, you know pretty we much know. What, what we're talking about. <laughs> we all watch them. So, you know, you've got the lineup of Lewis Robert in center. Tim Anderson at short, Johan Moncada at third, uh, Jose Abreu at first, Encarnacion at DH, uh, Yasmani Grandal at catcher, um, Eloy Jimenez in left, Nomar Mazzara in right, and then Mendick will probably start the year at second base, but um, eventually Madrigal will come up to replace him. That's the hope, but we'll see how long that takes or if it even happens in 2020. But uh, a lot of projections say that it's supposed to. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, they're both good players, but uh, yeah. Madrigal certainly has a bigger upside. Right. So, higher ceiling. Um, Those buzzwords that people like to use these days. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So then you got the rotation of Giolito, Keuchel, uh, Ronaldo Lopez, who had a down year last year, Gio Gonzalez, and then um, Dylan Cease is expected to be in the rotation. Yeah, I like Cease. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he had a rough go of it coming up, but yeah. Well, they always, a lot of them do. I mean, yeah. First, well, that's true. Uh, yeah. So uh, the bullpen, um, you got, you've got, uh, or the bullpen possibles because, like, I don't think all of these guys will be able to make the bullpen. But you've got Jimmy Cordero, um, Al Jimmy Cordero. Alex Calame, um, Aaron Bummer, Evan Marshall, um, Jace Fry, Kelvin Herrera, um, C. Shack will definitely make it because they just signed him. Right. Um, and then you've got people on the fringes like um, Carson Fulmer and Kopech. Um, you don't know exactly what's going to happen with them, how they're going to factor in, but we'll have to see. Yeah, I mean, Kopech won 
Yeah, he's going to be in the starting rotation for sure. Yeah. He would I think. Mean, that kid's got a lot of talent. I'd like to see, I mean, him and Cease, boy, five years from now. <sighs> right. And then the bench, you got uh, Lori Garcia, James McCann, Zach Collins, and Adam Engel, potentially, who I love, personally. So I love Collins and Engel. <laughs> <laughs> That's Looking good. Forward to watching them both play. Yes, and yes, and we know in one of your one of your leagues you have Zach Collins, so you definitely want to see him. I might trade him to you. Who knows? <laughs> All right. So now that brings us to the Bobos, the Boston Red Sox of twenty twenty. Train wreck that could be. Yes. <laughs> So uh, the the lineup that I found on Roto Champ had a lot of the players that you had provided to me, really all of them. Um, just it like made a lineup out of them. So um, the the Roto Champ lineup is uh, Benintendi in left, Devers at third, Bogarts at short, J.D. Martinez at D.H., Michael Chavis at second, Mitch Moreland at first. Vasquez at catcher, then Pilar slash Verdugo, whenever Verdugo is actually the guy that they decide will play right field, and then Jackie Bradley in center. So, yeah, that's um, it. So that's, that's not bad. I mean, you know, we got some holes. But... Yeah, I mean, and Verdugo is the guy that came in in the Betts trade, which I'm sure you probably weren't that happy with, but... Uh... Well, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, in... I, I was okay. I mean, yeah. I, I like I like the re, I like the revi the revised version better than the first version. Although in my brain, I would have liked to get Gatterall, Downs, and Vertigo instead of having Wong in there. But they yeah. messed it up, and so they had to try to save face. And but I mean, I think like getting Jeter Downs is going to pay off down the road. He's quite a Right, I know. I know you were really big on getting Jeter down, so that was that was nice. And I, you know, and I'm Vertigo is going to be a good player. Reminds me a lot of Freddie Lynn. I don't know if he'll, I have to say, reach Freddie Lynn standards because Freddie Lynn was great his first five years right, and right. kind of average his last ten. But uh, I mean, if he's, I think he's got some Freddie Lynn in him. I can tell you that his arm is phenomenal. Right. So if you're going to trade Mookie Betts, you know. Yeah, I mean, I like Which Verdugo. they were pretty much set on doing, I think. Yeah, and, and I mean, I think we all understand the reasoning behind doing it. Um, yeah, no matter what they try to spin and say, <laughs> we all get it. They right. wanted to get under the cap. Right, right. So the luxury threshold. Well, yeah, so. I mean, but that and the fact that Betts hasn't shown any willingness really to work with them and sign an extension now, so. No, no, he definitely wanted to go to the free agency and, and get a, I mean, he's going to get his... 350, 400 million for sure. So, right, right. And I, I mean, maybe we should have paid him that. I don't know. Someone will pay him it. And then we'll see what happens. I don't think any baseball player, one single player, is worth that much money. But no. if anyone is, it's Betts and Trout, you know, that, that kind of group. Right. You know. Yeah, I agree. But I mean, we got three good players, I think. You know, I mean, I don't know what Connor Wong's going to end up being. Maybe he'll just be a backup, but he's got power, right handed power. For a catcher, which is rare, you know, that's not mm -hmm. will that transcend to the major leagues? We'll see. Right, right. I would have rather had the pitcher. You can't, in my mind, you can't really trade the caliber player of bets. Let's say he's the second or third best player in baseball, and not get a pitcher when you need pitching. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like we yeah. don't have enough pitching, so I would have liked. Right. I don't care if he was going to be the closer for the next ten years yeah. or or the third starter for the next ten years. We needed a pitcher in that deal. Right. <laughs> Hence the, uh, and we're going to get to that in a second, but hence the question mark in the fifth uh, rotation spot. And the fourth rotation spot, too, now, because Sale won't start the season. Oh, well, we, yeah. We, we only have three starters. But <laughs> is, Sale's going to start the season on the DL. Well, how long is he going to be out? I mean, is it a long Probably thing? two, three weeks, I would say. Okay, yeah, well, then, it's I mean, up. you know, if he's eventually going to get that spot, then that's... So we've got a rotation that looks like... Um, uh, when Sale comes back, looks like Sale, Ivaldi, um, Rodriguez, and then Martin Perez, and then a question mark. So yeah. So right now, for the first three weeks, or maybe April, we have this is the greatest rotation ever. We have Rodriguez, Ivaldi, uh, and Perez. So we have Rodriguez, who's good, and then we have a guy who missed most of last year with an 
injury. And then we have a guy who had a 5.12 ERA with a 1.52 whip last year. Right. And and by the way, is you know 29 years old. So you know that's not really intimidating. No, it not, it really isn't. It is not. Uh, you know, and then we got mystery guest number four and mystery guest number five. So I, you know. Right to start out the season. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, and who knows what sales going to be when he gets back. So that's the that's the really interesting thing is we we don't know what sale is going to be. He's got a range of uh, possibilities. He could be 2018 Chris Sale. He could be 2019 Chris Sale. He could be in between. We don't know what Evaldi's going to be because frankly, Evaldi's probably had in his in uh, in the last three years two good months, and he got a four year deal for forty million out of those two good months. You know. Right, right. That's and a then good we point. certainly don't know what Martin Perez is going to do because, like I mentioned, maybe you didn't hear me. He had a five point one two year. No, I, 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 <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So then, uh, going out of the bullpen. Now the bullpen looks a little better. Um, you've got Brandon Workman, um, Barnes, Brashear. Um, Marcus Walden. I don't know a lot about Marcus Walden. Yeah, yeah, really solid rookie year last year. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. So, nice year. And then Taylor, and then Darwin's and Hernandez. I like Darwin's if he needs to find the strike zone a little bit more, but uh, you know he's young. He's only, yeah. I think twenty two or twenty three. So. Yeah, so that's a, that's a pretty decent bullpen that they got. Uh, it could be a very good bullpen. It really yeah. could. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Workman has to prove he can do it again. You know, but right. he can. Right. He can. I, I have confidence in him. And Barnes is pretty good. And Brashear just needs to find uh, whatever he was missing last year because he didn't have the. He was good against righties last year, but boy, he left his torch like a like a flamethrower. So yeah. yeah, he needs to find a way to get lefties out if he's going to be in that situation. But then we have Darwin Zahn as a lefty, and I think we picked up a couple other guys that you didn't mention that have a shot at making it. So you know, we got a capable pen. Yeah. And we're going to need it because we don't have any starters. That's right. You will. That is exactly right. And then the um, the sparse bench that I have listed here is Plaecki is the backup for Vasquez and then, yeah. and then Dahlbeck. Or LaCroix. We just signed Jonathan LaCroix. He's you did? Nice. That so is good. I don't good. know if he's going to beat out Plaecki. Who's going to win that job? You know, maybe they'll carry three. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, one of those guys, they're both capable. Right. Well, you know, this week, I mean, this year it expands to 26. So, right. Yeah. Right. They might keep three. Yeah. So, you know, some teams will keep three catchers. Some teams will keep an extra reliever. Uh, some... The interesting thing about that is uh, all three of those catchers hit right handed. So there's no, like, uh, oh, yeah. You know, no, there's, no, there's no lefty compliment. Right. Uh, no platoon so... advantage there. So, yeah. Yeah. And Connor Wong is also a right-handed hitter, I believe. So, yeah, we don't have any lefty-handed catching hitting catchers, but the lefty uh, lefty hitting catcher we did have couldn't hit, so that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We lived with Sandy Leon and his one seventy-two batting average. Sandy Leon has moved on to Cleveland. The tribe. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, and the only other thing that I needed to make sure that I mention is that this year. The uh, White Sox will play Boston in Boston on um, April 2nd, April 4th, and April 5th. Yeah, very first series, right? Um, uh, the Red Sox, is that the it's Red got, Sox well, first home series? Is it? Mm. Yeah, I think so. All right. And then they play in Chicago on 825 to 827. So. All right, we'll be there. You and me, we're going. <laughs> Are we going? <laughs> Late August in Chicago. Okay. <laughs> Road trip to Chicago. So, so um, anything else you want to add about the uh, Red Sox coming up this year? Well, I like the White Sox better. Yeah. Well, and yeah. there we go. We got it right from the horse's mouth. You heard it right here on the Sportsman Z show that a Boston fan is saying, admitting that he likes the, the White Sox better going into 2020. Well, we'll see. I mean, they, yeah. they gotta, I think their ceiling might be a little bit higher if everything if everything fell great for both teams. I think the White Sox might get end up with a better record. We'll see. I mean, they got a lot of guys that need to to 
do it again and to prove it like uh, Eloy Jimenez. Yeah, I think I mean, Eloy needs to. I think he's going to be fantastic. Yeah, he now. needs to take a couple steps forward, I think. Um, but the, the only holes I see in the White Sox lineup really are, uh, I mean, you never really know what Mazar is going to do for you. you right. Know? I'm, not, right. I'm not sold on Mazar. And then, of course, you got to figure out, you know, what's going to happen in a second. But, I mean, where else is the hole? Where's the hole? Right. I mean, I guess you don't really, you can't really count on Robert being an all-star, but he's going to be solid. And if you pair him with an angle, who can, you know, uh, had a very good year against lefties last year, then, I mean, that's a pretty good yeah. fielder hitting and fielding line. Yeah, so. you would think that um, that Robert, he's going to need time just like Eloy had to get time. Like, Eloy started off a lot worse than he ended up. But he... Well, yeah, but also look at the fact, we're talking about Eloy, Needing time, the guy ended up having what? Third, how many home runs did he hit last year? Well, he hit, yeah, he hit two. <clears throat> yeah, he hit thirty-one home runs. So he, yeah, home. I mean the home runs was good. Um, yeah, but uh, you, uh, you know the two sixty-one batting average and the three eighteen on base, you want to see that come up. I mean, ideally yeah. you would. You know, you, no, you definitely will. Uh, you do, and you, I think you will. But yeah, you're right. Uh, you do want to see it come up. It has to come up. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Uh, and then you need to get something on Mazzara. And then really the rotation is is, is going to be the biggest factor. So what are you going to get? I mean, Keiko, what are you going to get? And then Lopez, what are you going to get? And then Cease, what are you going to get? Because uh, obviously Giolito was fantastic. And can he, can he repeat that performance? Probably? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, now, see, but, that's that's my question is whether Giolito yeah. can be quite as good as he was last year. I think you need to expect maybe a slight step back on that, but but still good. Yeah, I think still, still good. Yeah, and then, I mean he'll be capable. And then, uh, but you don't really know. I mean, Lopez needs to step up his game. Yeah, he does. He does. And, and... Keiko has to be Keiko, uh, the good Keiko. Right. Uh, you know, and, and he he still got. He's not old, too old. He can do it. I no, think he's he's like thirty two. It's a tough division. You know, well, yeah. I mean, the Twins are going to be tough. Yeah, the know? Twins are going to be they're... tough, and really, even Cleveland is going to be better than I. Think thought they were going to be even after losing Kluber so yeah no I think they'll be okay I, they have some good young pitching much much like the White Sox but again the, the back three or four of their rotation you, you're not sold on because you don't really know if they can repeat their performance right. you know Clevenger when he comes back will be solid for sure right yeah I mean that that's a given so I mean but he's going to miss the first two or three weeks of the season too I believe so well there you go Maybe. But it's, uh, you know, it's exciting. It's yeah, exciting. it is. It is. I think it's a little more exciting for the White Sox fans than the Red Sox fans right now. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. That's not to say the Red Sox can't have a good season, but, I mean. Right. Well, they're in a very, very, very tough division, so that, that also yeah. doesn't help. I think it's all relative, though. I think all the divisions are tough in a way. I mean, the two, you know, each, each division has at least three teams that could win it. I mean, you know, the West has the, the Astros, and uh, the, I mean, who else is in the West now? Uh, fresh my memory, range the Rangers are, are probably not going to be able to compete for the title, right? No, yeah, probably, probably not, not quite. Angels probably not because they don't. I mean, maybe, but they don't quite have the pitching. Yeah, they don't. The Angels are lacking the pitching. They, yeah. yeah. So maybe, I mean, you know, we'll see. Mariners, no, for sure. Right. You know, they're not going to do it this year. Right. But the Central has the Twins and the, and the uh, White Sox, and maybe the maybe like you said, the Indians possibly, and then right. and then you know who knows? Yankees, Rays, and Red Sox. I mean, the Jays are better too. So who knows? Yeah. You know? Yeah, the Jays need their young players all to make serious steps forward. But yeah, they could be potentially very good. Yeah, yeah they signed some veteran pitching, which could help. You know, yeah. if, the, if the young hitters come along, so right, right. Uh, you know, I think the only team we can say for sure that's going to be horrible are the Tigers. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe they'll be better than we think. I don't know. And the, Roy the Royals going to be horrible. I don't know. Maybe. No, the Roy. Well, I mean, no, I don't think be, they'll be horrible. Be average. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be an exciting season. You know, yeah, I think, it uh, will be. I'm looking forward to get past the the science team scandal and the madness of all that and maybe just playing to see some baseball you know? right oh and the boston thing did they did they come out with any punishments or report on boston yet not yet they're supposed to come out yesterday and they didn't yeah i thought i thought it was one guy we didn't mention for the red sox too is uh peraza right did we talk about peraza no because i don't think we did yeah so i mean that was another move they made uh, i don't know if it's gonna i, I mean it doesn't 
doesn't have any signs of being a great move. I just wanted to mention him. So people didn't think we forgot him, but, okay. you know, yeah. we're talking about a guy with a 701 OPS over the last three years. So Right. Uh, but he's only 20. Again, another guy, he's going to turn 26 at the end of April, so he's still young. He could find it. But I don't know after why he would suddenly find it in Boston after he spent the last uh, four years in Cincinnati not finding it. Right. I mean, he had, he had a decent year in 18, but, I mean, his – you know, and then he had a part-time, half-time, decent, a very good year in 2016, but it was only half a year. And even then, his best year when he hit 324, because he doesn't walk, he, his OPS was 762. So, I mean, Brock Holt could have given you that, albeit probably a little more expensively. So. Right. I don't know necessarily what they're doing. Maybe it was all about getting under the threshold, you know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it was because they did that, and now they got some flexibility. They're talking about, you know, looking for pitching, but because they have some money now. But guess what? Who's who wants to get rid of pitching right now? No one's looking to trade their pitching. So, right. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Right. Anyway, I'd probably throw this for conversation off course at this point. All right. So yeah, thanks for being on the show and shedding some light on the uh, 2020 Boston Red Sox for me. And, uh, well, hey, anytime I can help shed you some light. I'm all right. We can shine some light on your head. I'm always for that. <laughs> I got my head on, so that I prevented that from happening. But... All right, I'll take so, that hat off. All right. So, anyway. Uh, uh, so, uh, you're going to have me on again throughout the season so we can talk baseball. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. All right. The weekly Bob and Chris uh, baseball breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we you have a good morning, and uh, we'll talk to you later. You as well, sir. All okay. right. Bye. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, gave a little bit of a you know a different um, twist to it by having somebody who's a fan of the team and lives near you know in there in the team's um, um, in the team's. Uh, demographic area so that they could talk about some things maybe that I wouldn't have heard or that other people might not have known um, so but um, I want to remind everybody subscribe to the channel ring the bell send it to other people if you like it um, if you want to see Chris on more definitely leave a comment <clears throat> and let me know that I think uh, his insight would be valuable to the channel and that I should have him on more. But for right now, it's Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.